the safety honor and welfare of your country comes first your own ease and comfort will come last You are charged with Indian Army Act Section 41, waging war against the king. Fire! रात दिन अपने सीने पे जुवाजती आजादी दे राग नो बंद कर ला। सब तो पहला मैं हिंदुस्तानी हाँ। Welcome to this episode of Eureka and we are going to have a very wonderful conversation with Dr. R.K. Kotnala. I am sure you all would have heard about uh, stories of how, you know, some magician or uh, somebody uh, with magical power were able to light a lamp with just water and not oil. Maybe they are all just stories, but perhaps that can become a reality in a different sense just by using water at room temperature. Can you produce electricity? Our guest today, Dr. R.K. Kotnala has done that revolution and we are going to talk about it. Keep watching Eureka, but before we continue with our conversation, we will have a small introduction about him. We will watch a small film about him and then we will continue the conversation. Keep watching Eureka. The ever-increasing demand for energy has led many scientists to work on clean material technologies. And prominent among these scientists is Dr. R.K. Kotnala. Dr. Kotnala is heading the Environmental Sciences and Biomedical Metrology Division at National Physics Laboratory in New Delhi. With an experience of 33 years as scientist, Dr. Kotnala completed his doctorate in silicon solar cell from IIT Delhi. His experience in areas like spintronics, electric materials, spin hall effect, humidity center, solar cell and hydroelectric cell stands him apart. Dr. Kotnala's professional career scaled a new high when he, along with his colleague Dr. Jyoti Shah, invented the hydroelectric cell in 2016. Hydroelectric cell is a green energy device which runs on water without using acid or alkali. This device can be used in rural areas for their basic need for electricity required for bulbs and lamps. Recipient of many national and international awards and recognitions, Dr. Kotnala has also published over 360 research papers in international journals. He also has nine patents in his name. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, being with us. It's a very wonderful uh, opportunity for us. You've done a very wonderful job. Lots of media, international, national is talking about you and your uh, wonderful research. You have named this as hydroelectric cell, right? Right. Can you tell us something about this cell? What does it do? Hydroelectric cell, uh, a material which is magnesium ferrite, mm -hmm. uh, substituted by lithium. Mm -hmm. When we put a water on it, mm. then it dissociates it into H plus ion and mm -hmm. OH ion, means okay. hydrogen ion. That is H2O is split into H, H and OH. OH ion. That is, uh, there are two hydrogen and one oxygen, but you are splitting it like one hydrogen, but whereas you are keeping the other oxygen and hydrogen together. Right. You are splitting it like that. Correct. Yeah, fine. Right. So, what has happened then? Uh, but once we get these two ions, mm -hmm. if we wish to have electricity out of it, mm. then these ions have to be separated mm. and collected. Okay. Uh. So, for that matter, 
we have designed mm. a electrochemistry two electrodes mm -hmm. utilizing electrochemistry mm. and as a two electrodes mm. on on this material magnesium ferrite mm. we have put on one face mm. the silver as a cathode mm -hmm. and on the other face mm. we have put zinc as anode okay okay yeah. so uh, if uh, i mean i have to use a kind of a analogy uh, this is something like a battery but whereas in a battery you have a electrolyte i mean a special chem chemical that you create by spending energy and then you are putting inside a battery and there is a cathode and anode and because of the chemical reaction inside that uh, chemical divides into two when they divide into two one is positively charged the other is negatively charged and because they are moving away electricity is uh, produced it's very similar to that if i'm correct right uh, you are very correct mm -hmm. it is similar to uh, the cell mm -hmm. electrochemical cell mm -hmm. uh, we are doing it without using any electrolyte uh -huh. no chemical and just water just water okay uh -huh. and that two material which are which have been used not at all toxic because okay. if you talk about lead you talk about lithium mm -hmm. they have their own toxicity even mm -hmm. ammonium chloride which is used in dry cell okay so later these are all are toxic but so which essentially means that uh, this has much more versatile you know i mean because if it is a battery uh, it need not be centrally produced in one place i mean it can be put inside your car it can be put inside your scooter it can be put in your device let's say mobile you know it can work without uh, necessarily centrally producing electricity that's what uh, is the uh, very important aspect of this discovery am i correct uh, you are very correct mm -hmm. it it is a portable it's very light light compared to the even ordinary battery mm -hmm. and also it has a lot of other advantages mm -hmm. which are not existing in batteries okay now let me come to understand this uh, slightly more you know okay i have water which you want to split into hydrogen and uh, oh ion right okay So how do you exactly do it? Can you kind of elaborate a bit? Uh, well, it is a very difficult and a complicated. Mm -hmm. All over the world, for last seventy years, the people are trying mm -hmm. that how to produce directly electricity from the water mm -hmm. through a material. Okay. But they were using ultraviolet light mm -hmm. and some catalyst. Mm -hmm. Here we are not doing anything. What we did in we develop a material, mm -hmm. lithium substituted magnesium ferrite. and we changed all processing mm. in different steps so that it gets us this ferrite oxygen deficient mm. and being a oxygen deficient mm. then electrons are trapped in it mm -hmm. once those are trapped it directly takes water molecule mm. closer to it mm. and there lithium and magnesium are atoms which are on the surface of the material okay they immediately take out oh ion out of it okay uh -huh. so once the oh ion is taken away mm -hmm. then h plus ion is available uh -huh. and that h plus ion is getting trapped in nanopores mm. which we have created by processing in material mm. and that h plus ion generates a very high electric field inside the pore where other water molecule which are coming in contact mm. they are being directly dissociated into h plus ion and oh ion spontaneously one uh, thing that uh, makes science different from magic uh, is uh, the principles are very solid okay one of the fundamental principle of science is that energy can be neither created nor destroyed you only change if i have a solar cell it takes the energy from the sun and converts it into electricity but uh, how does that account in your work in in our uh, this material because we have prepared it already oxygen deficient where already you know initial uh, initially chemical option chemical uh, reaction happens on on the surface of the material so then energy is released during that energy is now in the form of ions so those ions are now collected in nanopores nanopores are further dissociating water molecule so it is a basically transferring of the energy i'll call it this way from material science to nano science 
nanopores and then finally as a electrode chemist as a electro uh, chemistry we are taking a, it on electrodes yeah good so I, in some sense uh, it's not it's magical but it's not actually magic it's science it's uh, based on yes. uh, understood principles of uh, physics we'll take a very short break we'll come back after the break we are going to discuss his and his colleague jyoti shah's work in much more detail how this whole work is environmentally friendly green we'll take a very short break keep watching eureka welcome back to eureka and we are having a very interesting conversation with dr rk kotnala who is a chief scientist and also heads the environmental division of national physical laboratory a constant unit of csir and this discovery of generating electricity from just water has caught international attention this work you know like uh, the uh, story goes that rama was in uh, one was for about 14 years you took about more than 14 years to complete this work you and your colleague jyoti sharma jyoti sha jyoti sha can you say a few words about your galik jyoti sha before we further discuss about this discovery dr jyoti sha uh, in started as a phd program mm-hmm. with me mm-hmm. for developing this material okay the how we can dissociate water molecule mm. into ions and that material was developed during her phd program and later on we went for its device making okay so she has been with me since beginning till the even today very 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 interesting i mean uh, she had started her career along with you and then it's uh, continuing even now continuing very very uh, very very interesting and and she has got uh, very uh, good scientific uh, career mm-hmm. and she works for me many times i need not to i just say that please do this so she will go for processing this i say yes it is uh, how we have uh, got the results so we have to depend we keep on discussing together and this 14 years has taken, taken to come out with a new hydraulic cell with new material new new device and even the working principle is also new yeah as the saying goes uh, inspiration is 1% and perspiration is 99% i mean it takes long time it's not like just on a day a discovery is made and usually it's not uh, individual but uh, a collaboration of uh, like minded people together is generally which results in uh, a new uh, innovative discovery and your story also says that let me move to another question i mean coming back to your device okay which uh, essentially uses zinc and uh, silver as uh, anode and cathode right right so in any battery any uh, cell i mean uh, whether it is a dry cell or a you know a wet cell the cathode and anode gets corroded degraded for a period of time that's when you say that the life of the battery is over so in same way your cell is also very similar to that where the zinc also will be corroded the silver will also get corroded so which mean that we might get into a situation where we will have a lot of waste material right which may create a problem for our environment so how do you are looking at handling this issue see uh, as far as uh, even we talk about a solar cell mm. we know very well that if they are not uh, working mm. and we have to dispose them so mm. degradation in nature is a very difficult yeah. situation in this case again you are you are very much right that zinc is to uh, will be getting corroded even silver will be also getting corroded with the time and when we we say that now it is to be thrown away mm. magnesium ferrite which is magnesium oxide iron oxide and a very little lithium oxide into it mm-hmm. so these oxides as a main material of the um, hydroelectric cell mm-hmm. just gets mixed with soil right. or even water nothing is toxic which mean that uh, if actually this technology comes into practice it may not uh, be a burden on the environment that's a main yes, important yes yes a very uh, important part yeah so let me move to another question i mean you have made the discovery 
so most of our minds what would be uh, uppermost is when do i see it in the market when do i go to a local shop and say that uh, give me a hydroelectric cell and not uh, environmentally polluting uh, you know today's dry cell or a wet cell when can we do that in this we we have to go one step ahead which is a industrial r and d mm-hmm. if some industry comes or even the government creates a, some new <coughs> energy institute mm-hmm. so there we can develop it and to me it appears within one and half year we can do that job mm-hmm. so that we can come out with a small uh, workable product not workable device because workable device i have got with me these things need a mar- you know ultimately market uh, so this uh, process what uh, one can call as mind to market what are all the steps that is essentially required so that uh, actually your invention or your discovery can be a product which people can use in the daily life what are all the in between stages which will be required o- on- only uh, you know one step i have told you industrial r and d industrial r and d means like even the context which we are putting how the water will be put on cell mm-hmm. so some design is to be there now the once these hydroelectric cells are con- to be connected in series and parallel mm-hmm. which we know that we how the resistance so the whole manufacturing mm-hmm. uh, processes including the raw material and then also finally devising it in the particular way which But is usable specifically we we are more concerned on uh, device final packaging mm-hmm. and their context and some technical problems mm-hmm. associated with it mm-hmm. which i can call it a engineering problem as well okay okay as far as question of production is said mm. because in lab we are able to produce even 4 by 4 inch cell okay. and not one okay. in 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 the furnace which we uh, we have got we could do four cells together mm-hmm. small cells we are able to produce in hundreds also okay, okay. Uh, it is not the case that the it cannot be produced mm-hmm. but when it goes to market as a product mm-hmm. then economics comes as a one important factor mm-hmm. for that definitely we should have production type of equipments which where again industrial r and d part which we see the one step mm-hmm. that is also needed very very interesting i mean we are having a very interesting conversation and we had a really good look at uh, is new invention hydroelectric cell we'll take a very short break we'll take a very short break keep watching reka after the break we are going to talk about is other areas of research have you heard of something called spintronics yeah it's very similar to electronics we'll going to understand what it is what was his work other than uh, this hydroelectric cell after the break keep watching reka welcome back to reka and we are having a very interesting conversation with dr r k kotnala chief scientist and also heading the environmental division of national physical laboratory a constant unit of csar in fact uh, how did you get into science what inspired you into come to this area is it just accident that you got into uh, this job so you are doing this work or uh, even as a student you were kind of motivated to become a scientist when i was a 10th class student mm-hmm. i had read a Mm, news okay in fact it was a uh, in editorial uh-huh. of hindustan times uh-huh. way back around 40 40 years before okay around uh, 75 or so uh, right uh, 1975 okay. uh-huh. around and there i i read about solar cell solar cell solar cell okay uh, it was you know thought of using in satellite that uh-huh. time uh-huh. so i was fascinated with that how will come sunlight falls on something like a silicon i was not aware of there is a pn junction in it mm-hmm. it is a solar cell mm-hmm. named as and how it will produce electricity so that curiosity then i decided if i have to go for a research mm. i will go for that only that's very very that's <coughs> very very interesting actually this tells a uh, a very important lesson for us in india if you want to inspire young minds uh, this kind of a popularization of science is a very very important uh, aspect i mean it can inspire people like you to come into uh, sciences that's interesting and this is also very interesting that uh, one of your earlier works has been in the area of solar cells right, right. so what did you do uh, in solar cell research in fact i i am 
first PhD on silicon solar cell okay. in India. Okay. It was just in, initiated in India to work on silicon mm -hmm. solar cell. Mm -hmm. And what we were trying that time, in the initial stage, we were copying that the how solar cell can be uh, okay. fabricated in the lab. Later on, we improved its processing mm -hmm. and to make it a low cost okay. solar cell mm -hmm. so that it can be used for public, not uh -huh. for the satellite. Not only for the satellite. Uh, satellite, it doesn't satellite. matter even if it is costly. I mean, you are going to put only a small amount. It right. doesn't matter. It's okay. But when you want to have a public utility, you need to be uh, looking at economics. Right. right. Uh. So, we, we worked on te for terrestrial solar cell, mm -hmm. uh, low cost. And mm -hmm. then we developed a one process. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there also I have, a, I have got a proven research papers uh -huh, uh -huh. in journals, uh -huh. which uh, showed that the yes, we can go for. Low cost solar cell. Yeah. The other area which is uh, also very interesting, which you have worked, is some area called as spintronics. So, what is this spintronics? Spintronic is the uh, is the frontier area mm -hmm. on magnetic materials mm -hmm. because I had a background of the magnetic materials as well. Okay. And a spintronic in a spintronic uh, device, which they are to be used as a very low powered like a microwatt, mm. even a picowatt mm. power they can be run. There we need a manipulation of the electron. Okay. But in a spintronic, we are manipulating orientation of electron spin. Okay. Whether the electron is spin like this or whether the electron is spin like this. Yes. Whether it's on uh, clockwise or anti-clockwise. That's anti -clockwise. what uh, you are kind of… No, because let's say we talk about the clockwise mm. and then the clockwise is not the only one electron. Mm. There are trillions to trillion electron in a material in a very yeah. small area. Then what we do in this spintronic, we control the orientation of these one. Okay. Like a light polarization. Uh -huh, uh -huh. So we control their, their spin and by controlling the spin, we can use them as a device mm -hmm. and those devices are like multiferic devices, even uh, spin hall effects. So on on all those material, I have been working, and to finally make out of it a device, magnetic tunnel junction. Magnetic tunnel tunnel junction. junction. Okay. So Which, what does it do? <clears throat> it acts as a fast switching device. Okay. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And. On the other hand, if I am using the only material, then the different orientation of the spin of an electron mm. can be used as storage of memory. Ah, okay. So, which means that, for example, a computer stores 0 and 1. Right. So, you basically say that if it is spinning clockwise, it is 0. If it is spinning counterclockwise, it is 1. And then by controlling it, you can actually store uh, 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 yeah, some data in terms of uh, spins of the electron. Is and that what you are saying? A spin of only one type uh -huh. at different orient orientation. Okay. Uh -huh. Means if the it's a spin up, uh -huh. so all spin up will be put together uh -huh. in a one material special materials we develop. Okay. So those are to be controlled. Their orientation is controlled. Just to control, and then that uh, that uh, is stored as information. How that will be uh, better than what we have today of uh, storage memory storage devices. Uh, at the, at the moment, we are using the transistors, mm. FETs. Yeah. So, those memories like a flash memory mm -hmm. we talk about. Earlier, we were using magnetic material. Mm -hmm. We are, Still, we are using in a hard disk, we are still use the magnetic materials. So, compared to them, with this kind of a, a spintronic devices, we are able to reduce the noise and they consume very less energy. Okay. And, and they are uh, fast, fast. So, per unit area, the storage can also storage be… Storage capacity is also quite uh, high. In this, uh, what is your current uh, area? I mean, like uh, both in uh, solar cell and spintronics. What is that basic question that you are trying to address today? In case of hydroelectric cell, mm. I consider it to be only uh, important project or I will say the for my lifetime achievement, mm. of course, Dr. Jyotisha is also with me. Yeah. Uh, because as a scientist, mm. we normally see that the have you published 100 papers one century mm. in journals. 
I have already published more than 362 papers in international journals. Okay. Uh -huh. But I feel creation of hydroelectric cell, the material, device, and moreover, interesting part of it, every material, every raw material is from India okay. and abundantly available. Oil. In case of, on the other hand, silicon solar cell, we talk. Mm -hmm. So there, we don't produce even silicon. Yeah. And even technology, even the device, all was invented outside. But here we have invention here only, and it is a low cost technology mm -hmm. in all the way compared to solar cell or a fuel cell. Okay. So compared to those various cells, I mean, uh, hydroelectric cell is really low cost. Yes. See, one of the major challenges for uh, expansion of, uh, you know, solar energy is uh, land. I mean, if you want to put up a solar farm, you need a land, right? I mean, and that land cannot be in faraway places, but then you cannot, you know, bring the electricity and things. Of, I mean, there are various issues related to land. How does that fare with your invention? What will be your impact on uh, environment, let's say land use? Land use. Uh, if we talk about solar cell, you need a 100 meter square area mm. to produce 1 kilowatt yeah, power. That's a rule of the thumb. It's a, it's a rule of thumb, yeah. approximately same. And then you need a particular inclination and the sun sign depends because the efficiency which we quote like 18%, 20%, that is during the daytime, mid, yeah. midday. Midday, yes. Uh, otherwise, it decreases. Mm. In this case, hydroelectric cell, we don't need that much area. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It needs a very small because we can just pack yeah. these because these are flat plates mm -hmm. like and those flat plates can be stacked together. Which like we uh, you stack biscuits one after another. Uh, one after the one. other yeah, uh -huh. and the water is already put into that Okay. Uh, or we can pour it from outside mm -hmm. external means. So, area will be reduced so drastically. Of course, we have not calorie compared to solar cell because you don't need any light for it. Mm -hmm. So, you just pack it as much as and that you can put all together and on the one, let's say you have made a one um, battery out of the hydroelectric cells mm -hmm. combination. One is there, then you can put another battery on top of it. So, on you can top use three-dimensional. So, the, you, we can… It's not just know, only uh, the area but uh, three-dimensional yes, space. Uh, we can, need uh, not to spread it like this. Yeah. So that way it is very important. Uh, very, very uh, interesting. I mean, we could have had much more conversation. We could have discussed many things more, but then time is a constraint. We would uh, end this conversation here. But it was a very, very uh, wonderful uh, experience of uh, knowing that some really revolutionary uh, research work has happened in our Indian lab and we are able to project it to our uh, audience through Raj Sabha Television. Keep watching Eureka. We'll come back with another episode next week with a conversation with another Indian scientist. Keep watching Rekha. <laughs>